All right. Hey, hey, Sammy Du, the real estate guru, coming to you live from Pressures World Enterprises Office Studios. And I uh, want to talk some real estate today. I uh, want to talk to you about the, on the subject of the ignorance of daisy chains. <laughs> the ignorance of daisy chains. Um, you're going to typically find that uh, uh, daisy chains are, that happens out there is usually a bunch of rookies that really don't know the business. That's kind of complicated a, a transaction. Uh, and there might be a couple of seasoned folks inside of it only because they were taking advantage of the rookies that don't know what they're doing. Uh, you also kind of find that uh, in most cases, folks don't really truly know how to ex assess an ARV and uh, what a repair range would be for that property. So that's, uh, again, why folks are uh, getting involved in, in creating this daisy chain. And simply, you're just leaving a lot of money on the table. Uh, the one that actually has to deal is leaving a lot of money on the table. So. I just kind of want to break that down a little bit and uh, kind of show you, first of all, I, I, I hear folks that really don't know what daisy chains are. So I kind of tell you what that is and then also tell you how uh, this, this is able to occur and tell you why it's a pretty ignorant type situation to, to be involved with. Um, so let's just kind of start with, the ignorance and see if you can see that ignorance of daisy chain. I know my writing's not the best, but hopefully you can see what we're talking about. So that's kind of the subject matter. So what I'm going to attempt to do is do my best to kind of illustrate um, what a daisy chain is and why it is an ignorant process. So what I want you to do is imagine that this circle uh, is a house and actually is the ARV of a house. Because simply uh, when we talk about an ARV of a property, uh, that's the most important piece before we get into uh, all the other sections of a property because those sections matter and they make up what is considered uh, the ARV, but they, they make up uh, different parts of the, 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 the property that, that matters. And so for one, uh, I, I like to just kind of always use the illustration of a, you know, a pie, uh, sort of like the shape of this or, uh, you know, having a piece of pie. And so you've got slices of that pie where, let's say that this slice here, I'm going to use a different color here. Let's say this slice here Let's say this slice here is the mortgage balance. Uh, which is kind of the main piece of that ARV. We'll call this entire, we'll call the entire pie the ARV or what we know as the after repair value. That's what the entire pie represents as the after repair value. And, um, uh, that number could be whatever the, the after repair value after the property has been restored and put on the market, what the after repair value is. However, uh, what you have to also consider are all the different costs 
that kind of goes into uh, a property. So uh, if there is a mortgage on a property, that is part of that cost. Um, you're also going to have, uh, you know, repair costs. And uh, let's say that uh, the repair cost is X amount and maybe even as much, eh, I might even go further with this. Let's uh, just for the sake of graphics, let's make the repairs. Uh, well, I think that was good. Let's make the repairs. Let's let's make the repairs about here. Let's say this is the cost of what the repairs to restore the property is. And uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna make that a little smaller, only for the sake of because I am talking about daisy chains. So I'm gonna make this a little smaller. I'm gonna make this a little smaller, this section of the pie, because there are other costs as well. So let's say, let's say the repairs are here. The repairs are here. Okay which uh, these two items are probably the most important parts of an ARV. Uh, you also want to kind of consider things like holding costs. Closing. Some will uh, tell you to to figure uh, agent agent fees once you get it restored. So let's say agent fees are over here. All right, and uh, you know that's kind of uh, the the bulk of everything. Uh, it can vary again from uh, property to property, and but for the sake of this this uh, illustration. Uh, these are all slices of the pie uh, of this particular property, okay? And uh, what happens is, of course, when it comes into wholesaling, uh, this is the spread that everybody's trying to get a piece of. So typically when you're wholesaling, uh, you may get, uh, you know, this part here as your fee, let's call this a wholesale fee, or even call it your wholesale fee. Now, here's the thing. Your wholesale fee, uh, is just another piece of the pie and is actually subjective. It, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, $3,000 or $5,000. It could be ten, twenty, dollars because all of this is what is left of the spread. So the key is going to be, first of all, do we have the 70% left that's going to be attractive, attractive to an end buyer. And so 70% is a little bit more than a quarter. So let's just say that uh, this here, let's just say this here is your 70% that uh, a typical in investing buyer uh, would want to have once all of this is still done in the property, okay? So let's just say this is the, the remaining uh, 30% uh, because I, I meant the reciprocal of the 70%. Uh, typically, uh, a buyer wants to buy with 30% equity, so they're buying at 70%. So all of this here is the 70%. Let me uh, change colors on this. So all of this here, so from here, and here is the 70%, 
And of course, <clears throat> this here is the 30% equity that we want to make sure the end buyer at least have uh, when they buy. So your wholesale fee is this, okay? And whatever that number is, $5,000. What a daisy chain is, is this. You get another wholesaler that sees your deal and see that you're offering this right here. And there's all this still that's left. So they want to come in and, 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 and say, hey, I can help you move this because there's still more than 30% left here. We're probably closer to almost 50, 50 to 45% left. So everybody, they want to, they want to join in on this. So here's more wholesale fee for somebody else. And now, so here's somebody else, someone else will just make number one. And somebody else gets hold of it, and now they want to do the same thing. And we'll call this number two. Wholesale fee. And needless to say, you know, somebody else is seeing and there's still room and they're they're doing it. And everybody's saying, hey, I got buyers, and you know. I got buyers and I can get this move because they're looking at whatever they see the numbers are that you're offering. And uh, so all of this in this section, all of this here in this section is what's known uh, here from, from your wholesale fee and then everybody else tagging on. That's what's known as the daisy chain. And this creates a lot of paperwork at the, at the title company. Everybody's got their, assignment contracts that, that has to be fulfilled and each one of those assignment contracts has that particular piece. Um, and so then the question would be is, well, why did you only ask for this amount out of this particular deal? Uh, was it your intent to give your end buyer all of it? The rest of it, which not necessarily wrong with it, but you had the opportunity to actually increase your wholesale fee from five thousand to let's just for the sake of this five, ten, fifteen, twenty. You could have gotten you a twenty thousand dollar wholesale fee from this, where the end buyer uh, is still able to have the thirty percent equity that they are requiring in order to purchase the deal. $20,000 versus $5,000. But because of your ignorance and being able to vet the deal out properly of what, you know, the, what the ARV is, and let's just play with round numbers, let's say it's $100,000. And let's say maybe there's a, you know, maybe $20,000 of balance left and maybe another, uh, you know, $20,000 of repairs. And then you add agent costs and closing costs. And, you know, it might be a little high, but let's call it another $20,000. There's $60,000 uh, ARV of uh, $100,000 would be $70,000. So we've got, uh, so that, that, these numbers are a little high, but uh, you've got $70,000 here uh, a balance from the say the sixty to the you know seventy that 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 left that piece of the pie is still left whether we divided it up in five thousand or three thousand or whatever. But here's the thing: this if you if you if you do the proper analysis of a property, you shouldn't have to create a daisy chain to get it moved. It creates a lot of extra work for really nothing. It's money on the table that you really should have had for yourself because technically all of this should have been yours. All of this, this wholesale fee here, 
this wholesale fee here and that wholesale fee there all of this All of this should have been your wholesale fee. And this could have been, you know, 10, 15, maybe even $20,000. And you've gotten paid because you bet the proper, the property out properly. The, the deal was attractive for an, the end investor buyer that wanted to buy at, with 30% equity, providing that the repairs and the property was in good shape and all the other costs involved. Um, and everybody wins here. The problem with these daisy chains is we, these folks are not properly analyzing these properties to know what the numbers are, whether they don't know truly what the ARV are, or don't know how to properly identify all the other costs that's involved with a property. So for one, uh, it, it attracts other sellers that might know a little bit more, uh, wholesalers that might know a little bit more, and they're just basically wanting to pile on to your deal uh, and, and help sell and you're under contract with them, and if they gave you a dollar, you're actually locked in, because sometimes wholesalers, most of the time wholesalers don't give you anything. Uh, so you, if, if, just so you know, if money doesn't transfer hands, uh, <laughs> you're not binding in real estate. But uh, you know, sometimes they give you a dollar just to lock you in, now you, you, you can't do anything, and all they're doing is also looking through their buyer list or trying to find a buyer, uh, for it, and then they find some other wholesaler that got attracted to it, so they pile on and they pile on. So then you have what's called a daisy chain, which is pretty uh, pretty ridiculous. It's happened, and it does happen, and folks do get paid through. But bottom line is, if it's your deal, you're you're, you're leaving money on the table unnecessarily and creating that extra headache in getting the transaction done. So I want to do a quick video to talk about the ignorance of the daisy chain, because I think it's also uh, damaging the credibility of the wholesale niche, because we have so many rookies and so many uh, folks putting out, you know, bad information or incredible information or uncredible information uh, when it comes to these transactions, putting out bad deals for one, uh, when it comes to these type of transactions. And we just, it's just too many gurus that's out teaching these uh, seminars that's getting everybody all amped up because of the glitz and glamour of real estate. And it's just creating a bad, bad name on a lot of these rookies uh, that are trying to get in the game. So uh, if you hadn't gotten your first deal, hey, maybe your first deal was a daisy chain. I've heard stories of, of, of that happening. But it doesn't mean that that's a great situation. It means that you didn't really know what you were doing, and maybe, maybe even some of the others. Uh, to have one is is bad enough, but to have multiple days, multiple wholesalers on the same deal, that that's just totally an, an atrocity. And I want to just kind of address that. You know, part of my handwriting, uh, I prefer to type, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to address this. So. If you hadn't gotten your first deal yet, or uh, gotten your second deal yet, or you're, you're having trouble getting your business off the ground, maybe you have heard this term daisy chain, never really know what it meant. Uh, I want you to, uh, first of all, subscribe to this channel, like this channel. If you like this content, please make comment. If you don't like the, comment, uh, the content, let me know that too. I'll stop putting this stuff out. But uh, uh, my mentors told me it's time to reach one, teach one. Uh, so it's now my desire to um, try to help a few folks uh, 
walk them through getting their first deal, uh, holding your hand. And so uh, anytime, whether my mentee or some other folks that uh, come up with issues that's real time on the street, because I'm actually on the street doing things on a daily basis, uh, and I come across some things that it seems like, uh, you know, the people need to know, I'll uh, make sure I'll try to do some video on it to provide real time content. It is not my niche to sell you into real estate and to tell you all about the glitz and the glam and how to be wealthy and all this kind of stuff. That's not what I do. I'm not a guru. Don't want to be a guru. I am Sammy Dew, the guru, the guru. I'm doing it. And um, I'm here to show you the real work, the real thought processes, uh, real time uh, with, you know, real information that you don't learn on YouTube University or you don't learn in some of the seminars. You only will learn because the information has been passed down to you from folks that have been in the street like myself. And so if you don't have a mentor, uh, feel free to subscribe, uh, click the link in uh, the description or somewhere around where you could uh, either subscribe to a private coaching group of mine, or if you want to book some one-on-one -on -one time with me and I can give you in an hour everything that I think you can do that you might need to do, it would break down what you're doing to get you going and getting you closer to your first deal. Uh, or if you want just to get some one-on-one -on -one time with me, and have me walk you through uh, the entire process from you know, helping you to identify how to get a deal, to analyzing a deal, to uh, draw, helping you know how to draw it up and helping you know, and, you know, vetting out your buyers and sellers and all this kind of stuff. I can help walk you through all of that. Every single one of those, I, I have a, 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 a course that I talk about, and I'm not selling the course, but I have a course that I talk about called the, the eight pillars of a real estate business. And um, every one of those pillars are very comprehensive. Uh, to include this section, uh, it comes in one of the pillars of being able to analyze a deal to know what your exit strategies can be, because not every deal would look like this. This is a typical uh, wholesale type of transaction. But if you need to kind of help just describe like the channel, subscribe, uh, subscribe to the channel as well as subscribe to my private coaching group. Um, and uh, like I said, you can also uh, look at booking a one-on-one -on -one, uh, time with me and we can even talk about even further uh, mentorship and coaching with you. But uh, for now, I wanted to talk on the, the subject of the ig ignorance of a daisy chain. Because I see so much about daisy chains out there. It's pretty ridiculous. It's a headache uh, to many of us that are seasoned and been in the game for a minute. And to see that this is still continuing to be a problem in this country. <laughs> uh, let's, let me just tell you, it's, it's very uh, ridiculous. And more importantly, for those of you that are wanting to be serious, you're leaving money on the table. Bottom line, you need to learn your craft. And you really only got to learn your craft by getting help, getting a mentor, getting a coach that can help break some things down to you so you're not leaving money on the table. I tell you, most of my deals, I think I average in most of my deals ten to $15,000. I've, I've, of course, have had some 5000 and even $3,000 deals that I've done. Um, I typically won't even get involved in a deal if it wasn't at least $5,000. Uh, yes, I've done a couple of three, but most of my deals average ten to 15000 dollars uh but i've also had them as high as you know i think my highest uh wholesale deal was forty thousand dollars and i did forty thousand dollars in three weeks uh that's the one that i remember the most because that's been the highest uh, all my other was just average about you know ten to fifteen thousand when i've done uh you know some wholesale type transactions so uh if this helps you uh please like and subscribe Please make a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you don't like it, let me know that too. Uh, so until then, uh, I'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless.